Welcome to worship today as we gather uh, in this time together in God's presence with one another. It is good to see you today and to be here in this place with you. As we start today, will you uh, say this prayer with me? This is called a breakthrough prayer, and we're going to talk more about it as we, as we get into the service. But will you say these words with me? Come Holy Spirit, come show us how we can be the spiritual heart of this community. I am glad to be joining you today, and uh, uh, prayer is the single most powerful act of faith that we can engage in every day on a regular basis, and our question for today is how do we start doing that so that we can experience God's power in that way? From wherever you're joining us today, from whatever platform you're on, uh, it is good to see you. Whether you are online now or you'll be joining us at 1010 in person, whether it is Saturday or Sunday or another time that, uh, uh, that works best for you, it is good to be gathered today. As we gather, uh, we do have just a few announcements of things that are coming up in this next week. Uh, our garden group it will be meeting after church today. So that is anyone that is interested in putting together a community garden and all the pieces that uh, will go with that. Uh, do stay after the in-person worship at 1010. Or if you're joining us online, uh, let me know and we can I can get you up to speed on kind of what we're doing and what we're looking at. And, and we can figure out how you would like to be a part of that. Uh, Monday from 3 to 5 p.m. will be the food pantry. We'll be down in the basement of the Fellowship Hall. And so if you know some folks can make use of that, or if you could yourself, come out our direction and we will make sure that you get taken care of. Tuesday afternoon at 4 p.m. we'll be back on Facebook for a time of prayer. And then our prayer group will be gathering at 5.30. So I invite you to join in either one of those if you can uh, to share in that time uh, for just for a time of prayer as we go along this week. Um, some things to uh, to uh, to be reminded of. Don't forget to check out our April newsletter. It is on our website. Just go to marcelineumc.com backslash blog. And uh, as of the uh, Sunday of the, of the weekend of this worship service, it is still the top most post that is that is on uh, that blog. And so uh, just take a look at that and see some more things that are going on. Also, our Orpha Circle will be collecting uh, uh, used pill bottles, prescription pill bottles. Just make sure you take the labels and the identif uh, identifying information off of them. Uh, they can be sent off and used for uh, in other parts of the world for folks that need them. So if you'd like uh, to make a contribution to that, we have a box set up in the back of the sanctuary. Or just let me know and we can make sure that they get, uh, that they get taken care of. For now... Join with me in our call to worship. It will be up here on the screen and join as we worship together. Almighty God, you have built your church on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Join us together in unity of spirit by their teaching that we may become a holy temple acceptable to you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. We will hear these words of our opening prayer. O Good Shepherd, you desire to guide all into safety, refreshment, and peace. Meet us here today and fill us with your love, that we may look into your world with your loving knowledge. Welcome our sisters and brothers with your joy and offer our lives with your generosity as members of your beloved community. In your name we pray. Amen. We come to the part of our service where we make our offerings. Now, uh, traditionally, this is uh, our, our monetary offerings, and other times we have passed offering plates. But really, we remember as Methodists that uh, we make a commitment when we join the church to support it by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness. And so I invite you in this time to, if you have a sp uh, specific prayer request or joys that you would like to share, to do so down in the comments, whether you're on YouTube or Facebook, uh, and let us know. If it is more of a private prayer request, you can always message us at the church or email me directly, and, uh, and that will be good. Um, but I invite you to share those uh, with us as we lift that up together. Also, if you would like to make your gifts, you can always send that into the church, or you can give uh, you can give online, and we can receive uh, your your offerings in that way. Mostly, though, here in a moment, we will there will be some music playing, and I invite us to take some time of silent prayer and offering and giving of all of those things, as we uh, as we know that we are God's children called to be here in this place today. So I invite us now as the music plays, and after it's done, I will say a few words, and I'll invite you to join with me in the Lord's prayer. But for now, I invite us uh, to hear this music and to make uh, and to give of our offerings today. Let us do this now.
gracious Lord, we give to you today. We give up all of these things of our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness, knowing that you have joined on this journey with us, that we are in relationship with you, that we share these stories, we share who we are, just as you share yourself with us. And so we lift these things up to you. We lift up our joys and our concerns, those we know who are hurting and struggling, others who are celebrating and experiencing wonderful things, and others still who are just going from day to day. Lord, we lift them into your care. We also take this time, Lord, and we know that there is so much going on around us, that uh, in our world and in our nation, uh, folks who have been hit hard with natural disasters, others who are suffering the effects of man-made ones, and still, Lord, others that are struggling to find their place in this world. Lord, you know those concerns, you know those worries, you know those things, and we offer them into your care also. Lord, we ask as we do these things that you help us to be in your presence and to know your will, to hear your voice as we uh, are in prayer to you, to know that this is a conversation that we have with one another, and that as we do this, we can hear you better and more completely than we ever could before. Help us to do that work so that we may be truly be your people, to share your light and your love, your hope and your promise with all those that we come across, not just through the intentional use of our words and actions, but just even by the life that we live, that others will see that there is something different because you are with us. And so it is that we lift all of this up to you today in the name of your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And we commit all of this into your care through the words of the prayer that Christ taught us as we say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Something new that we have, uh, we tried last week, and I've invited us to continue to do this, is that uh, here in just a moment, we will have our scripture reading from Acts chapter 4, verses 23 to 31. And as those words are read, and as you are able, I invite you to stand and hear these words. Will you stand and listen for the reading of God's word today? After their release, Peter and John returned to the brothers and sisters and reported everything the chief priests and elders had said. They listened, then lifted their voices in unison to God. Master, you are the one who created the heaven, the earth, the sea, and everything in them. You are the one who spoke by the Holy Spirit through our ancestor David, your servant. Why did the Gentiles rage and the peoples plot in vain? The kings of the earth took their stand, and the rulers gathered together as one against the Lord and against his Christ. Indeed, both Herod and Pontius Pilate, with Gentiles and Israelites, did gather in this city against your holy servant Jesus, whom you anointed. They did what your power and plan had already determined would happen. Now, Lord, take note of their threats and enable your servants to speak your word with complete confidence. Stretch out your hand to bring healing and enable signs and wonders to be performed through the name of Jesus, your holy servant. After they prayed, the place where they were gathered was shaken. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking God's word with confidence. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Now, um... I want to start in our message today uh, with kind of last week we talked about this thing called breath prayer. Uh, did, were you able to try any of that last week or maybe several times throughout the week? Uh, if you don't remember what a breath prayer is, a breath prayer is uh, that one that we make that really is just really about intentional breath, intentional breathing that breathes in and breathes out. And I recommend that you do this because it does uh, some incredible things. The, the most important thing that it does is that it interrupts the moment that we're in, especially in those times of struggle. It interrupts things so that we have an opportunity to refocus and to, and to overcome the things that might be uh, getting in our way. And most important about this is that we can do this as a way of practicing being in God's presence. And not even just practicing, but so that we can be in His presence. And how that works is that we don't have to be super good at it. 
We don't have to have been doing this for a long time. It's the wonderful thing about a breath prayer is that it is something that can be done by anyone at any level of praying, ability, skill, practice, whatever. And it can be something as simple as uh, saying, come Holy Spirit and breathe in and then breathe out. And say, come Holy Spirit. And in doing that, that can draw us into God's presence. And it can change our focus on, uh, on what's going on around us. And when we do those things, we take notice of our mind, body, and spirit. Uh, listen to the things that they are telling us that are so easy to look over at other times. But when we take that intentional time to stop and just to breathe, that helps us to focus on those things and to know that they are there. And remember, the point of this is um, not that we're going to fix things immediately after this, but it's just to take notice, to name them, to know that they are a part of who we are. And we can't fix things if we don't know what they are, but fixating on things can also get us into other trouble. And so it just is to take notice as we breathe in and breathe out and to notice that they are there and to remember that as we do that they are given into the hands of the one who can help us to see what we do next i've been trying this now uh, more intentionally in uh, through the course of this last week and it has helped with uh, some of the anxiousness and moments of being uh, being overwhelmed and and even a few times when i've started running through that checklist I, you know the one, the one that is all the things that, we, that I want to be doing or I want to do or I think I should do. And, and then there's also that part of the checklist that only comes out in times when we're getting anxious or overwhelmed or our heads are spinning and they just won't shut off. And that rest of that list comes in of the things that maybe we've wanted to do for a really long time but haven't or have forgotten about, but they will make their appearance known in the worst timing possible. This kind of prayer can even help with those things, kind of help us to change and to refocus, maybe to, to know that they are still there, but to take the importance and the weight off of them. Um, now, it's been going well. I have to say, it, does, it has been going well for me to do, uh, to do those things. Uh, but I also have to remind myself in process of this that this is a practice to continue doing. This is not a silver bullet that's going to fix everything. Uh, because that's what I want. What I really want is a silver bullet, something that will fix everything that is uh, that's going on. That's that you know. That's what I want. That makes things easy. That uh, they don't have to worry about it afterwards again. Um, but that's not what's going on here. That's not a thing that it is. But it is a practice that we keep doing. So that especially for the times when uh, when maybe we aren't sure what to do, and that's when other people will say, "Well, that's when you fall back on your faith." This is something that we can fall back on. Prayers like this are a practice, and I have to tell myself that, um, and that I'm not always going to uh, do them well, or the most effectively, or even the most efficiently at times, but that's okay, because I'll get better uh, with the more practice that I do. It'll become more comfortable the more that I do it, um, and so I want to encourage us to do more of that in this coming week, and in fact, at the end of this message, we're going to talk about a way of doing, uh, doing that more, uh, more and more. Uh, but I want us to take a look at another question that begins to build on uh, this breath prayer. And one of the things that comes up with prayer, and also how we live, uh, this is a question that comes up with, uh, with prayer and also how we live our lives. The breath prayer doesn't need words. In fact, it can be its most effective when we don't worry about the words that we're saying because we all have those times when we just don't have the words to use. We don't know the words to say, but we're reminded of where we were last week in Romans 8 when the Spirit will still hear those sighs that are too deep for words, that even if we don't know all the things that are caught up in that breath, in that moment, the Spirit will hear it. But eventually we do need words. If for nothing else, then words help us to help to provide direction and purpose and understanding that we can't get otherwise. And I know both from, uh, well, not just both, but from all of my years of experience as a pastor and all of my years of experience of being a mediocre prayer, uh, and also from the many conversations that I've had with lots of folks over that time, that one of the hardest things about praying are words. Words are hard. We don't always know the words to use, the words to say, all the different stuff that goes with it. Words are a struggle. 
What do we say when we pray? Uh, do we just ask God for things? Do we, do we just say someone's name? Do we expect that? Do we need to know all the details of what it is they're going for? Or can we, uh, or can we just say that the Spirit's going to fill in the blanks that we don't know? Uh, how does that work? How does all that come together? We have to remember that prayer, fundamentally at its core, um, is not about just about asking God for things, but it is about a conversation between us and God. Fundamentally, that's what prayer is at its most basic. And the more and the the more we work to have better conversations, the more we get out of them, and the more that we get out of them, uh, I should say, excuse me, and the more that we're looking for is. Uh, looking for more knowledge about who God is and what God wants for us, the love that God has for us, comfort and support, a sense of belonging and purpose, and even shared joy in the good things that happen. These are the things that come out of a deep and a meaningful prayer life. Now, these things aren't high-minded God talk either. I used to, I have to admit, I used to think that when I would hear folks say like this, things like this in regards to prayer, that I'm like, well, that's all well and good, but that's stuff that's like beyond my capability to really be able to deal with. That stuff that's beyond uh, what I know or what I really understand. But, um, but uh, think about this, because the same thing happens with uh, our conversations with other people. And so, ask yourself this question: Who do you have the best conversations with? I mean, I've had some really good conversations with random strangers over the years, uh, and sometimes much the annoyance of my family and friends that I can do that. Uh, but I can also say, though, that with the uh, with the 99% of the random conversations I have with strangers, most of them really aren't deep and meaningful. They're, that's a very rare conversation that happens. But do you know who I have the best conversations with? The ones that I have the most deep, meaningful, most impactful? It's with family and friends that I'm really close to. It's with coworkers even that I'm really close to. Those are the people that I can have the deepest and best conversations with. Sometimes they're silly and fun. Sometimes they're deep and impactful. Sometimes they're all of that combined together in the same conversation. But it's in those relationships that I find knowledge and love, that I find comfort and support and belonging, a place where we can share, we can have those shared joys and experiences with other people. It's in those places that those conversations, that meaning can happen. In those relationships, even with just a few words, volumes of things can be communicated in just a very short space. But that only comes from the intentional work of building relationships. Think about it this way. Uh, our scripture reading this morning comes from Acts chapter 4. And uh, and in there, we're actually going to back that up a chapter into Acts chapter 3. Because Peter and John are have done do something amazing in Acts chapter 3. They, uh, they heal a man. Uh, and it's wonderful, and it's good, and it's great. And they do it in Jesus' name. And that's actually what starts to get them in trouble. Because uh, they do this, and then they get called before a group of religious leaders who uh, don't like what they're doing. Not so much for the healing part of it, but because they're doing it in Jesus' name. And so they call him in, and uh, and this group of folks that are this uh, religious leaders um, are called the Sadducees, and they don't believe in the resurrection of the dead. Jesus' resurrection, anyone's resurrection, they don't believe in that. In fact, this isn't the first time that Jesus or his followers have had uh, have had these kind of interactions with them. On this very topic of the resurrection, we can go all the way back to Luke 20, and we can see Jesus uh, dealing with the same thing uh, in that time. And so they were after, these Sadducees were after Peter and John for what they were doing and the success that they were having. Because there were so many people that were coming to faith because of Peter and John and the rest of the disciples. But they also kind of knew that they couldn't do anything to Peter and John. That because of their popularity, because of what they were doing, because they were still expressing deep faith in God, that, uh, that they couldn't really do anything to uh, these two gods. So uh, they kind of set them down for a stern talking to them. They tell them, we're going to let you go, but don't do any of this stuff in Jesus' name anymore, because that just, we can't abide by that here. Uh, it doesn't work. Peter and John know that uh, these Sadducees don't really have uh, any power over them, at least in uh, in this moment. So, uh, And so they're released, and they get this talking to that's not really going to go anywhere. And I think probably everyone knew that it wasn't going uh, to go anywhere. 
Um, so they're released, they go back to the rest of the disciples, and this is where we pick the story up in Acts, in Acts chapter 4. They go back to the disciples, and they are just super excited about the things that have happened and the things that they have done. And in the uh, Common English Bible, that, in that translation, the, uh, the title for this section is called, The Believers Pray. Because they come back, and that is just what they do. They come back, and they pray. Um, they first report back to the disciple, the rest of the disciples what's happened, but it takes up like that much space of, uh, of the passage. The rest of it is all about them praying. And here's where there are some things to note about all of this and why it was, uh, why it was so powerful. And, that's, um, and it's also why Peter and John were so overwhelmingly confident in who they were and what they were doing, especially in front of uh, those religious leaders. It's because they'd been praying. I remember how much they prayed with Jesus in the Gospels. They prayed a lot with him. And even uh, after that, they, they prayed a lot. And the end goal of their prayer is to ask God to break through the barriers that other people put up so that he can be known to all people. In fact, go back to uh, Acts 4, verses 29 to 30. Now, the Lord, now, Lord, take note of their threats and enable your servants to speak your word with complete confidence. Stretch out your hand to bring healing and enable signs and wonders to be performed through the name of Jesus, your holy servant. These are powerful prayers that they are offering up, but that comes at the end uh, of this recitation of, of who God is and the works that God has done. Now, we have to be careful when we hear recitations like this, whether it's in the New Testament or the Old Testament, uh, that uh, for us, these aren't uh, things that we're reminding God of so that, we, so that God will feel somehow guilted into taking action in a specific situation. This isn't, uh, these things aren't recited so that God is put on a guilt trip. That's not, uh, that's not the goal of this. Um, but remember, what, uh, but take a look at what's going on here is that this prayer that they are having with God is the same kind of conversation that we have with those close families and friends, the ones that we can have really good, deep, meaningful, or even just sometimes fun uh, conversations with. This recitation are the inside jokes, the shared stories and experiences uh, that they have had together. These are the kind of things that you tell your kids, the stories you tell your kids over and over and over and over again to the point that they can tell that story almost better than you can and they kind of roll their eyes at it, but they know it. They know the story, they remember it, and it helps to define who they are because they know who you are together as a family or a group of friends or however that is that that works. Um, that's what is making them up. This is the disciples having a good healthy conversation with God. And the end result of this, take a look at uh, verse 31. After they prayed, the place where they were gathered was shaken. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking God's word with confidence. The power, the, their powerful breakthrough prayers based on the relationship that they have built up with God over a long period of time is what has enabled them to do what they did and to do it with confidence with the confidence that they have that is so big and overwhelming. This is the kind of prayer that we are searching for and that we want to pray. To build our prayer life, to live a life that is faith-filled. Um, these prayers, they don't have to be big and boisterous or illustrious, uh, but we need the ones that will draw us closer to God. The breaths and the sighs are a really good start, uh, but then we also need the breakthrough prayer that builds that relationship even more. And they don't have to be big and complicated. In fact, small and simple can get us a really long way. So let's put all of this together. The disciples' prayers were as effective as they were because they've been working on it. They've been working on this for a long time. And they had built up their relationship with God. And the goal of their prayer was simple, to ask God to be at work so that he might be known to all. Like that doesn't take up a lot of space. It's even in typing it on my tablet. You know, it doesn't take up a lot of space or, or time to say. It's a fairly simple, straightforward concept. Um, and so this is, this is something that we can do also, that we can continue to work on building our relationship with God. We can offer a simple prayer. It can even be the same one that we used to start our service with. This is a prayer that is asking God to use us just as he did the disciples so that he can be known all around us. The goal 
is that this prayer will help to both deepen our own faith lives and also put us in a place where we can have those deep, meaningful conversations with God. In a moment, I'm going to invite us to say that prayer again. Uh, but also this week, I want us to do this. Uh, I have a, I put together kind of a prayer guide. You can kind of see that off to the uh, to the side. I'm not sure I'm going to put it on the screen yet, but uh, you can kind of see what that's going to look like. And uh, when each day, Monday through Friday, we'll, we'll have some time uh, where I will send a reminder out and put it on Facebook at 7 a.m. to invite you to pray. Even if you don't do it, then find some time this week where you can be consistent about doing it to offer this prayer. And it can be something just as simple as saying the prayer. It can be a little bit more with using this prayer guide that starts with this breakthrough prayer, has kind of a topic for us to focus on for the day, and then ends with that same prayer. Remember, though, it doesn't have to be complicated. The goal here is not to get it all right, but the goal is to practice. To practice being in God's presence, to practice, uh, to practice knowing God with us and to deepen that relationship with the have. So it can even be short. It can be just as short as prayer, just saying the topic for the day, and the closing with that prayer, and that may be all that it is. Do what works best for you to have that good conversation. And so now I invite you to join with me in this breakthrough prayer as we do, as we continue this work together. Join with me. Come Holy Spirit, come show us how we can be the spiritual heart of this community. Amen. And now let us go being a people of prayer that are in relationship with God, hearing his voice and sharing it with those who are around us. And let us do this in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to invite you to take a couple moments to, uh, to, reflect, on, uh, to reflect on that. But then I want you to join in a, a reminder of who we are as people of faith. Uh, we started doing this here just a week or two ago, uh, especially in this online service, as a way of reminding us of our faith. And so I'm going to invite you, the words will be up here on your screen, but I'm going to invite you to join with me in our response to this message and our kind of reflection on that, uh, to join in the Apostles' Creed as we're reminded who we are as God's people. Will you join with me? I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now I invite us to go from this place with these words of the benediction to go out to be a people of prayer, to share in these prayers as we go through this week, and to see God at work in our lives and the lives of those around us. Just as God's word was sent into the world to heal and redeem, so God sends you into the world this day to be light and love, healing and hope. Go now to be the light of the world, and may the grace and peace of God the Creator, the Redeemer, and the Sustainer come upon you this day and remain with you always. Amen.